Once again, it's Prophet Tom. What a joy it is to come together and open the mysteries of God. As we have mentioned, the Bible is full of secrets that God has for his children. That is for you and for me. In Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29, our key text says this, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may follow all the words of God. You know, the Bible was divinely written by the Holy Spirit. Yes, man wrote it, but the Holy Spirit inspired them. And the Bible is full of secrets, full of mysteries, full of rima. And we're opening them each Tuesday as we come together and look at a fresh revelation from the very throne room of God Almighty. And so we've been looking at the hand of God. And there are hundreds of scriptures in the Bible which relate to God moving his hand to change the course of history. And we're going to continue that today. And what we're going to look at today is living in the presence of God. By being in the hand of God, we must learn to live in the presence of God. Charles Spurgeon once wrote, Having been called to preach, having been called to preach the gospel, God forbid that I would ever stoop to be a king. The highest honor, the highest level in God's army that you and I can reach is to be ambassadors for God Almighty. To be an ambassador is far greater than any earthly king's. God said to the disciples, and he's saying to us today, the Great Commission, go forth and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. So the mantle upon us is a greater mantle than any king, prime minister, president who would reign on this earth. You know, Jeremiah tells us, and in Jeremiah chapter 18 and verses 1 to 4, we read of the potter, and it says this, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something on the wool. Yet the vessel that he made of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, how can I not do with you as the potter, as this potter, says the Lord? As the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Wow, that is a tremendous truth. A truth uh, that we will just open briefly here. But we know the story so well. You see, God not only with his hands created the universe, 
God not only with his hands made heaven and earth. God not only with his hands made the vast seas and the surrounding areas. God also with his hands created mankind. He bent down. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says that out of the clay of the ground, just as a potter, a potter takes the clay and begins to mold the vessels. Now, you know, I've done this. It's not easy to make a vessel. I've only ever done it once. I have the, the little saucer thing that I made out in my cupboard. Uh, but, you know, you have to put it on this whirl. And then you have to begin to pump the whirl. Uh, and then with your hands, you put it in and you begin to smooth around as it rises up. Uh, and if you make a mistake, if the whirl is not turning to the correct speed, uh, if your hands are not in the correct place, uh, if the clay is not sitting flat in the middle of that round uh, tray that it sits on, uh, then it will go offline. Then it will collapse. Uh, and you know, that's where our lives are at because of the sin of Adam and Eve, the clay was crushed and had to be remade. And you know, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this earth as the potter. And you know, he walked this earth. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out demons. And you know, the tremendous thing is that he said to the early church, and he's saying to you and I, that the call of God on your life is to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. And so, uh, so Christ came to this earth and he walked this earth uh, and he walked the walk. Uh, took him to the cross uh, where on the cross uh, he was bruised and battered uh, on the cross his body was torn apart at the cross uh, his blood poured out of his body uh, but on that cross uh, with the last breath that he could breathe uh, he said it is finished you know the potter Christ being our potter he's taken your clay he's taken my clay and on that cross in his last breath, he is saying, it is finished. You know, in the hand of God, the hand of God, this day, the hand of God is there to protect us. You know, Elijah, God hid Elijah for three and a half years so that King Ahab and the others could not find him. No matter where they searched, they could not find him. And even when they found him, when God told him to go back to Ahab and uh, the servant of Ahab found him, you know, there we see that uh, they were too scared to go when the soldiers were sent because fire would come from heaven and consume them. The hand of God keeps us. The hand of God watches over us. The hand of God guides us. The enemy cannot touch us when we're in the palm of the almighty hand of God. The hand of God protects us. I've told the story quite some time ago, a powerful story, an unbelievable story of a missionary family. They'd been on furlough in America and uh, they were going back to, to Mexico where they were missionaries and they come to the town where they were going to and these um, gangsters, these uh, bad men uh, were stopping all the cars and he was the fourth car and uh, there were three cars in front of him and they went to those three cars uh, and they put the gun in and shot each one of them. They came to his car and the music was playing and there was a song playing in the hands of God and, you know, as they touched that car, uh, they all of a sudden took their hand off the car, went to the next car behind and killed the person there. Then the police arrived and there was gunfire everywhere. The family rolled out and were laying in the gutter 
under the protection of Almighty God. That day, they got up and walked away because God protected them. Many dead around about them, but they got up and walked away because of the protecting hand of God Almighty. You know, God, in the hand of God, we experience healing. You know, there was a pastor in a village in in a town in Mexico, and he had just a small congregation. But he went to these uh, uh, teaching meetings for pastors in in, uh, Florida, and there he spent six months under the care of the pastor there, went back on fire with God, and the church began to explode. It went from 50 people to 100 people to 1,000 people. And because of this, they had to build a new church church and so they're up and they're building this church and one of the workers one of the faithful members uh, of this church was up uh, on the rafters uh, nailing the boards in there and something happened and he slipped and he fell 15 feet down to the ground and hit his head on the concrete floor and they called the ambulance the pastor wasn't there and the ambulance arrived and said look we're sorry he is dead. There's nothing we can do. And they, and so they, they were about to rush him to hospital. But the church members had rang the pastor and they, the pastor said, listen, do not allow anyone to move this man until I get there. It took 30 minutes for the pastor to get there. The ambulance people were getting irate. They wanted to leave, but the people would not allow them to touch this body until the pastor had arrived. The man was pronounced dead. The pastor went over to that man, put his hands on that man instantly, 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 the power of God flowed through that man. Instantly, the hand of God came down on that man. And the man coughed and his eyes opened and he was well. He was talking, but the ambulance insisted that they take him to hospital to do tests. So they took him to hospital. This was in the morning. That afternoon, that man was back on the work site, back on the roof, hammering nails into that building with no sign whatsoever that he had ever been dead or been injured. Hallelujah. The hand of God protects us. The hand of God keeps us. The hand of God heals us. The hand of God is with you and I everywhere we go. The hand of God is moving in our society today. It's moving through this present generation. It's moving through every situation, even with the coronavirus that has spread throughout the world. The hand of God is in control. The hand of God is in control of the opposition, of the enemy, of Satan. He cannot do anything without the permission of God or Almighty, the hand of God is unlocking the unlockable doors, is removing mountains, is removing walls. The hand of God is moving the mountains. We just need to speak the word. The hand of God, as Joshua obeyed the voice of God, wiped out the walls of Jericho. And the hand of God is removing mountains in your life today. Hallelujah. The hand of God. God took a child's lunch and fed 20,000 people with just five pieces of bread. Excuse me. (coughs) With five pieces of bread and two little fish. I love this story. You imagine Peter and the doubting Thomases and the other disciples and they get a head of a fish and Jesus says go and Peter go and feed a thousand people with the head of a fish and he went and every time they took a bit of that head it would grow back as it were and there was still a full head there. You know about 15 years ago David Hogan in Mexico. He uh, went to Mexico over 25 years ago and, and uh, he went out and he ministered to the Indian Mexicans. Uh, 
and they are the lowest of the lowest cast of people and he went there and he ministered to these people and one day they were holding a conference and what was the the tradition of the believers is and the tradition of the people is that if you invite people you must feed them and so they expected to see a thousand people come to this conference uh, but five thousand people turned up uh, and so the leadership uh, came to David Hogan the founder the leader of this movement uh, and they said to David Hogan they said what are we going to do we must feed these people and David Hogan said didn't Jesus feed 20,000 with a child's lunch uh, and David Hogan went over and put his hand uh, on the big pots that they were making the meal with uh, I've seen this in India we put on feasts there and they have these huge pots and they put chickens in them they buy these chicken pieces by the bag uh, and they put put chicken in it and there's water there and they boil it up and cook it and and they have rice and so on and so forth and so David Hogan went over and he put his hands over these pots and he said God multiplied it and walked away and he said feed the people and they fed the 5,000 and the pots were still full when they were finished hallelujah hallelujah God in the hand of God a multitude is fed in the hand of God God stopped the storm when the apostles or the disciples were in the storm and Jesus was down the bottom sleeping and the storm grew up and they became scared let me tell you whatever storm you're going through the hand of God will stop that storm the hand of God will stop that storm the hand of God is strong and mighty the hand of God is stronger than Pharaoh's the hand of God is stronger than demons the hand of God is stronger than your enemy the hand of God is stronger than the leadership of your country the hand of God is stronger than Satan with his little finger he cast Satan out of the heavenly realms the hand of God will lead you through life's path will lead you through the journey and while ever you're in the hand of God and under the hand of God nothing can stop you nothing can harm you under the hand of God he fights your battles under the hand of God he gives you power under the hand of God he reveals your future hallelujah God Almighty God Almighty we've just got something here I need to remove uh, just a moment there we go so we need to ask the question how do we get in the hand of God this is one of the great mysteries in the Word of God how do we get in the hand of God how do we get to that point like Ezekiel 37 and the hand of God came down and lifted Ezekiel up and then the spirit took him to the front line how do we get to that you know when we are in the hand of God we are abiding and living in the presence of God you see we must hunger for the presence of God when we hunger for the presence of God then God's hand will come down and lift us up the outward manifestation will be seen in such a way that when we're in the presence of God when we're in the hand of God there is authority in his words you know when we look at some of the great men Moses you know when we look at David uh, how come 600 men left everything to follow a, 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 a criminal and what brought about that how come you know the multitudes in uh, in Mark uh, chapter 1 and verse 22 when they heard Christ uh, preach uh, they said he doesn't preach uh, like the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, they said he preaches as one 
having authority. You know, when we're in the presence of God, when we're fulfilling the will of God, when we're in the hand of God Almighty, we are a general uh, with authority. And so when we speak, uh, the words we speak uh, come forth from our mouth uh, and from our spirit uh, with authority. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he said, thus saith the Lord. And when Pharaoh refused to listen, Moses could stand there. And we may look a little at this later, but Moses could stand there because God had already spoken to him. God had put that morning, God had put Moses in his hand and God took Moses up and God said to Moses, I give you authority. I give you authority. How do we know that? In uh, chapter 7 and verse 1 of, uh, of uh, Shakabarababa Exodus, it says uh, that uh, I have made you as if you are God before Pharaoh. God had given Moses uh, the ultimate authority. God had took uh, his signet ring off his hand uh, and placed it on the hand of Moses. No one could stand before him. No one could stand against him. He had ultimate authority. This is for you and I today. When we learn to live in the presence of Almighty God, when we learn to live and abide and walk in the presence of Almighty God, we have ultimate authority. Secondly, when we live in the hand of God, when we live in the presence of God, there is inspiration, revelation that will flow from our spirit to those around about us. The people were amazed when they saw Christ. Multitudes, you know, it's an amazing thing. We advertise on Facebook and we advertise in our churches and some churches spend uh, millions of dollars each year advertising uh, and yet in the Word of God, uh, Christ never once advertised his meetings. Uh, the crowds would flock, uh, they'd hear whisper, People would talk. Uh, let me tell you something, church. Uh, and do you know whether you're in the hand of God or not? Uh, let me ask the question to you today. Uh, are the street people talking about your church? Uh, are the street people talking about your ministry? Are the people in the next suburb talking about the church over there? Are the people that are next door to the church uh, talking about the church uh, and what's going on uh, in that church? Uh, is, uh, is there an anointing? flowing out of your life? Uh, is there an anointing flowing out of your church? Uh, which like Peter, when he walked the streets, uh, people would flock just to touch uh, his shadow. Uh, so inspirational, so much revelation, so much power, so much authority, so much anointing flowing out of his life uh, that the society around him was transformed. Uh, you see, church, uh, this is where we've got to get back to today. Uh, let's forget about our programs. Uh, you know, let's wipe our programs aside. You know, we've lived by programs. We've been controlled by programs. Uh, we've existed by programs. Uh, and so God Almighty, hallelujah, had to step in and wipe away all of our programs. Uh, he closed the churches down. Uh, to get us out of our four walls uh, into the community, uh, to get us out there where the people are, to stop worrying about programs, to stop worrying about doctrines, uh, to stop worrying about theology and just get out there and get the fire and the power and the anointing of Almighty God. Hallelujah. You know, we see inspiration coming through Moses. Uh, you know, Moses, uh, there was such an anointing on Moses uh, and Joshua was uh, his assistant. Uh, Joshua was the assistant pastor to Moses. Uh, and it says in Exodus and Numbers, it says that Moses would go into the house, the, the tent meeting, the place where they would worship God. Uh, and Moses would go in there with Joshua. And so see, J Moses was training Joshua. 
And Moses would go in and it says that Moses would leave, but Joshua stayed. Joshua was learning. Joshua was preparing himself for the day that he would have to lead Israel. He knew that Moses had an anointing. He knew that it took Moses 40 years in the wilderness to get this anointing. He knew that it took Moses a burning bush experience, that is, being in the hand of God. You know, when Moses went up in the mountain to wait upon God and to cry out to God when God gave the Ten Commandments, uh, Joshua was just below there. He was in the mountain. He wasn't down with the people partying. He was in the mountain. He couldn't be where Moses was, but he was as close as he could. I'm sure that he could hear Moses crying out to God. I'm sure that he could hear Moses ministering to God. I'm sure that he could hear Moses saying, oh, give me more power. Reveal more of your, of your glory to me, almighty God. Reveal more. Take me deeper, God. Take me deeper. And so when Moses left the tent uh, Joshua stayed he wanted more he wanted more he wanted more you know Elijah carried a mantle a mantle that e Elisha wanted uh, and you know God said to to Elijah go and anoint man uh, Elisha as your uh, as the person that will take over from you uh, and so he did and and you know Elisha came from a very wealthy home. Elisha had servants all around him. Elisha had the best king-sized bed that money could buy. And yet he left all of that and went and slept on the floor, went and slept in the open fields, went and slept in caves. He ate honey and wild locusts. He didn't live like he lived before. You see, we've got to change to be in the hand of God, to be where others would want to follow us, we've got to change. Elisha saw in Elijah something special. And when it was time for Elijah to be taken, Elijah said three times to Elisha, stay here. And you know, the prophets of those days said, don't you know that your master is going to be taken today? Stay here with us. But you know, Elisha, he wasn't going to stay. He wanted a double portion. And it came to point where Elijah said to him, Elisha, what can I give you? And he was already ready to answer. He had the answer. And he said, look, I've looked at your anointing, Elijah. Oh, man, what you've got is something special. What you've got is something that I hunger for. From the moment you put that cloak on my shoulders uh, back in my father's farm, all oh, the glory of God just flowed through me. Uh, my life was transformed at that moment. Uh, all of my life I've desired to be a prophet, but I don't want to be a prophet who speaks words from his own soul. I want to be a prophet who speaks the oracles of God. I want to be a prophet that has a double portion, a double anointing, a double authority, a double revelation to what you've got, Elijah. Wow. And then when we're a man like this, a man like Moses, a man like David, a man like Elisha or Elijah or Joshua, when we are men like that, men like us, like, like Shaka Barababa, the prophet Samuel, men like Jeremiah, men like Ezekiel, these men, when they looked up, at those around about them. When they looked at the rebellious race, we see that there was death within their hand when they would stretch it out. They would go into Israel, into God's people, and they would prophesy, and they would instruct. And when the Israelites who rejected the message and refused the message, the hand of the prophets would be stretched out uh, towards uh, God's children. Uh, and we see this with Moses uh, when they made the golden calf uh, and God 
God said, go down, there's sin in the camp. Uh, and Moses went down uh, and he stretched his hand out uh, and 3,000 souls uh, were destroyed on that day. Uh, you can't play with God, church. Uh, it's time to stop playing. Uh, it's time to get serious. Uh, in our hands, uh, if we're going to be a man and a woman of God, uh, if we're going to be the man and the woman uh, to change our nations, uh, then in within our hands, uh, we have authority to transform our nation. Uh, we have authority to cast out demons. Uh, we have authority to heal the sick. Uh, we have authority to raise the dead. Uh, we have authority to declare death over nations that would touch uh, the children uh, of God Almighty. Uh, when, we, uh, when we stand up to be the man for our nations and our cities, and our, 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 our states that we live in, we have that authority. We have revelation that can change the people around about us, that will draw the Joshuas to us, that will draw the Elishas to us so that they can glean and be part and take and drain from us the power of God that's within us so it goes in to them Almighty hallelujah, we have the power within us. If we are these men, if we're going to stand up and pay the cost uh, and be in the hand of God uh, to change our nation, we have the power to give life uh, and we have the power to give death. Uh, in Ezekiel 37, and I think it's verse 10 thereabouts, uh, God says, uh, to Elisha, uh, to Shabba Ezekiel. God says to Ezekiel, put your hands out towards the north wind, up towards the south wind, towards the east wind, towards the west wind. Speak to the winds uh, and command the winds to come and breathe life. Uh, into the dead bones. You know, within our hands, there is power to change lives. In your home, there are people who are lost, who are going to an eternity in hell. You have power. You have authority. You have the anointing in your hands to see your brothers, to see your sisters' lives transformed, to see your children's lives transformed, to see your parents' lives transformed, to see your neighbors' transformed. Uh, you need to do what Ezekiel was told to do in Ezekiel 37. You need to stand up to the north. Uh, you need to stand up to the south. Uh, you need to stand up to the west. Uh, you need to stand up to the east. Uh, and you need to prophesy the word of God. Uh, you need to say to your neighbors, uh, oh, I speak the anointing. I speak the authority. I take power over that area. And I speak uh, the power and the glory of God onto your house so that everyone will be saved. In your workplace, do it. To your children, do it. To your parents, do it. To your brothers and sisters, do it. To everyone you know, to your uncles and your grand aunties, and so on and so forth. Be that man. And then, if God ordains it, be that to your nation. Be that to your, to your states. In this time of the coronavirus, stand up and take authority. Stand up and take authority. Stand up and take authority. Hallelujah. To be in the presence of God requires, and our time's gone, so we can't go into this. But let's go to Ezekiel 36, 24. For I will take you from amongst the nations. You see, God is saying, Tom James, here is the mantle I'm placing on you right now. The mantle that I'm placing on you right now, Tom James, is a mantle to preach the oracles of God through the media of Facebook and Zoom etc etc you see the planes may stop but the gospel does not stop the planes may not go for the next two years but that does not stop the gospels that only generates the gospels i am reaching 
people that I would have never reached. I am covering every time I do a broadcast like this, I am covering five to seven different nations at the one time. Hallelujah. That's exciting. You know, I used to pray and I still do pray. And I used to say, God, translate me. If you need me to be in Russia, take me there. If you need to be need me to be in England, take me there. If you need to me to be in America, take me there. Well, he's done that right through the media here right now with the preaching of the word. The feedback I get is exciting and I thank you for that. So it says, for I take you from amongst the nations, gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own ministry. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean and I will cleanse you from your filth filthiness and from your idolatry and I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take uh, the, the heart of stone out of you, out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and, and cause you to walk in my statue. And I uh, and you will keep my judgments in all that you do. Well, our time's gone. We haven't got time to dig in that. Lots of revelation. We'll look at that next Tuesday. We'll pick it up from here and uh, just go where God leads us. You know, I do hours of study for this and I never get a fraction of where uh, I want to go, but God stops it where we need to stop. So hallelujah. Father almighty God, place us in your hand. I pray that there will be a, a raiment of people who hear this voice and will say, Father, I die to self. I give up all just to be in your hand. Help me, almighty God, to go forth in your authority. Help me, almighty God, to go forth in your inspiration and revelation. Help me, almighty God, to go forth in your power. I pray in Jesus' name. Let that be you this day. Let that be me this day. Well, God bless you. Have a great afternoon or morning if it's morning for you. And uh, may God's richness richly abide in your life and allow yourself to be the clay in the potter's hand. I pray this day.